a ghastly edit. Who are these people? Who are they? Joining us now, National Review education reporter Caroline Downey, who did a deep dive on the woke activists behind the move. Caroline, thanks for joining us on the bottom line. So tell us, who are these wokesters? Thanks so much for having me. You know, guys, it's bad enough that any self-important adult would have the audacity to censor the timeless work of a classic and deceased children's book author. Yeah. But in this case, it's even more. It's, <laughs> but in this case, it's even more egregious and insidious because it was a woke consulting firm that drove this effort. And I took a look at the so-called inclusion ambassadors, sensitivity readers behind this operation, and they run the gamut of woke identities. Just to give you a taste of one person who was intimately involved, they identify as a non-binary, asexual, polyamorous relationship anarchist. So these are the narcissists who think they know better than we do about what our children should be reading. I don't even know what some of these identifiers mean, like neurodiverse. I, and I don't really know what you get with non-binary, asexual, polyamorous, anarchist. But Caroline, do, does this consulting firm, because the, the estate of Raul Dahl was on board with them taking a uh, reciprocating saw, if you will, to all of these treasured books, they were okay with it. But do they actively go out and so, and like and solicit business and solicit um, you know, books that they can well destroy. It's unclear what compelled Penguin Publisher and Puffin, which is its children's book arm, to seek out the consulting services of a DEI company to try and change what was perfectly good fiction. It was funny, it was entertaining, it, it had so much humor and color. But I think the, the DEI complex is, is just so powerful today that an obscure group of activists with crazy backgrounds, as I just described to you, could come in to Penguin and say, you know, we'd like to neuter your gendered references. We'd like to make your fat phobic comments a little bit more inclusive and accepting. It's unbelievable that a company like Penguin w w would fall would succumb to this. Well, and, and, and to that point, th they said these terms perpetuate harmful stereotypes. And so to say man and woman or fat and skinny perpetuates a harmful stereotype, well, I'm, I identify as a man. You may not, but I do. You identify as a woman. And it, it almost seems like they're in the business of changing the way we think. It's, there's a thought crime if I don't say people or they or them, I say man or woman, or I can say someone's fat or skinny. They want to, they want to change what I can even think in my mind by taking this out of our literature. You know, some folks have written that it was actually worse that they scrubbed and censored these books rather than banned or burned them. That mm. would have been preferable because what, what in Inclusive Minds did was very Orwellian. It, yes. it picked apart, it scrutinized his literature for things that didn't align with contemporary progressive mores and it changed them. This is safe for your children now. This is safe for future audiences. Who's determining that? I mean, these experts at Inclusive Minds, they're clearly, they don't have this great big body of knowledge about children, children's literature. One of the ambassadors I found in a blog post claimed that The Secret Garden was written by C.S. Lewis, who wrote The Chronicles of Narnia. Newsflash, The, the no. Secret Garden was written by Frances Burnett. So, <laughs> so not, not only are they well, asexual, polyamorous, anarchists, they're stupid, too. Where did they go to college, out of curiosity? Do you know? No, I, I, I really don't know their, their school background. All I know is that they, well, actually, no, quite a few of them study inclusion. Like, they're just steeped in DEI. Their resumes mm -hmm. were, DEI was, was all over the resumes. Mm -hmm. And they, they personally identify as the groups that they would like to see represented in these books. But what was unprecedented about what they did this time is that in the past, Inclusive Minds had never taken historic works and reinvented them. They usually would advise you know, authors about new books that were coming down the pipeline. Of course, they would be very woke, say that Say there would be a, there, there was one book about you know a soccer a soccer team that uh, mistreated two players that were 
kids of color. So that's an example of a book that Inclusive Minds probably had some role in. But Roald Dahl, th this is a timeless author. They had never before done that. At, at, at worst, give us an option. You, you could do woke Willy Wonka and normal Willy Wonka. Give parents a choice, but no, we're going to change the whole thing. You can't buy the normal Willy Wonka anymore. It's all the woke Willy Wonka. You know what the worst was, according to Piers Morgan, in his estimation? They changed a reference to two tractors, or just tractors in, the, in Fantastic Mr. Fox, from black, black tractors. The mm. machines were both black. Because that's subliminal racism, yep. Sean. Can't make it up. Can't make it up. <laughs> Carolyn Downey, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you, Carol.